All right, little, just continuing this. Just I want to end it properly with Garth Ennis. Uh, part of me does not like that this guy has become the war comic guy. Okay, uh, he makes gritty stories. I keep mentioning the the issues I have with Mister Ennis. A lot of my sentiments are very, very similar to his. I'm very much against authority. I'm very much for, you know, the working dude. I'm very much for people getting their comeuppance. I'm very much for uh, a realistic view of sort of a masculinity and very, very cynical, okay? Of course, uh, another writer captures that even better, who doesn't do comics, my brother James, right? But in terms of this, he's done so many war comics that uh, he's made it ones that were pretty decent. Okay, uh, the enemy Ace one was excellent. Okay, you know, even though you gotta put in, yeah, he's not a Nazi. I hate the Nazis. I hate the Nazis. Okay, and every story that has Germans, there always has to be atrocities in it. You know, uh, as if they were the only ones to do it. But regardless, Johann's Tiger is another example of it. Okay, where you know the guy is a guilt-ridden. Uh, tiger uh, tank commander because what he did in the Soviet Union you know uh, instead of having the courage to make a story where plenty of them didn't do anything wrong to anybody uh, you know I guess you have to sort of do the still it doesn't take the fact that this tiger man even at the end the battle with the IC2s this Joseph Stalin tanks that was pretty good you know? uh, some of the other ones here of course he you know he's, a, I mean, he's biased to the British even though he's Northern Irish very, very moralist, very secular Presbyterian. You will be punished for your sins as if in hell. That's why a lot of... He likes to show the mutilation of... Uh, and the castrating, ga eye gouging, all this stuff. And the torture of the the bad guys in his stories. Okay, he's very, it's interesting to look into that psychology. But I don't want to go further with that. Um, yeah, I, this one. I, didn't, I remember this one. This one actually... This woman is actually really... Really sick, uh, but I didn't really care for that. The best thing that he did, which the people in this book don't agree with, okay, was tankies. Tankies, of course, I'm biased, right, because I like tanks, you know. Uh, but he, uh, tankies, he did three stories with these dudes, or with this guy, because there's a high turnover rate in the, the crew. This is probably some of the best stuff he's done since his, the stuff he did at D.C., Okay. And I will say, I did not like Preacher, but uh, Garth Ennis' uh, Hellblazer stories, I still have respect for them. So, And the guy's prolific. Yeah, Styles, right? It was cool. You see the different guys from the different parts of England. The Cockney dude's a, a cocky dude. He he thinks this guy's like a, a cannibal because he's from Newcastle. And he's kind of a rough little dude who's like 5'4". But uh, it's interesting stories. And of course, they go to Korea, right? This was decent too. I like this one, Anna Karkova. Okay, uh, there was some. Uh, the art was good. I forgot who did the art in that. Uh, yeah, so it was interesting because you know always. I mean, the, the Soviet Union was so progressive. They had women as pilots. Yeah, and tank drivers and other and infantry, and, and a, a lot of them died. What kind of what kind of country puts your women into combat? Oh, I forgot this country. Listen, remember, I'm not coming at this from a right-wing, uh, conservative, patriot, uh, pro-American view. So right off the bat, I've taken a lot of ammo out of the hands of people like Mr. Ernest. <laughs> but uh, this story is cool. I remember at the, one thing I take him to task for in this story at the end, when she was in the, the, the concentration camp and he gets liberated by the Soviets, she was talking to this guy... He looks like George Orwell, and he basically explained probably one of the most ridiculous things I've ever heard, uh, trying to justify Churchill, uh, that Churchill knew the British Empire was over, and he did what he did to have make a better future by allying with this uh, this genocidal, destructive entity known as the Soviet Union, which Ennis does not shy away from. He's not a fan of this of the Soviet Union either, but I'm just saying that it was interesting hearing the guy talk. Does, did Garth, do you really believe that about Churchill? Churchill is probably one of the most contemptible men in that war, but in terms of the comic, I thought it was interesting because she also points out something to that guy, which was interesting, what she says to him, uh, which is something, which is a, probably the biggest no-no you could ever say. And the fact that she said that and was still seen as a sympathetic character, 
I give Goff, you know, I got to give him more, I, I got to be direct. I got to give the guy more cr uh, credit. Uh, I got to give the guy more credit than I do. Um, although she's in the prison camp, and it's funny too. Uh, should I bring up the fact that, no, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not ready. I'm not going to do that. Not yet. <laughs> so, and then, uh, yeah, th those are the best ones. I mean, tankies, I like the Anna Karkova stories. So, I, you know, uh, I think I like a lot of the, the Soviet Red Army, like, people more than the American soldiers at this point. Not the ones raping all my mother's people in the uh, East, uh, uh, Germany, but you know what I mean. Uh, and just, uh, I guess, I just, I know they did the World of Tanks where this got popular, where, like, you know, all, all of a sudden... The German tanks are the worst tanks in the world, and and you know the the Sherman actually was way better than the Panther. You get this bullshit from this from people who follow these games, but regardless, so, no, yeah, Johnny Red, yeah, it's good. But uh, I don't think that really went anywhere. Oh look, a Russian female sniper. Anyway, come on, you know, uh, and like I said, he's pretty much the only guy. You know, I guess who's younger than, than Lomax and Van Zandt doing these war comics. So, you know, he's always going to be there, you know. There he is. Uh, ah, God, I pick on him too much. So, his other stuff, I don't particularly... Uh, his superhero stuff is like, you get it. You don't like superheroes. I don't like them either. So, I like to make fun of them. So, I guess he's... I, I agree with him again. <laughs> uh, maybe I do like Garth I don't know. You know what I mean. I'm just... You know how it goes. There's always nuance. Um, oh, the, the, this story. I remember there's another example of a story too that was interesting. Where Right, this one here where they actually show at the end of the war, you see the Russians raping German women left and right. Uh, there's the scene with the, the female Russian soldier, Red Army woman, who's laughing as the, the women are being raped. And then they're all killed, including the woman, by a bunch of these German tank crew guys who don't have their tank anymore. Uh, but what Garth could have done with the story is not have what he had at the end. Right? It just showed that, oh, they did atrocities too. So it's like a comeuppance. You, you could have had it where they were just regular guys that didn't do that. Let me tell you a story. Story time about the war. Okay? Let me tell you a story. Yeah, I have a good opportunity for that, and I'll leave it. My grandfather... Was in the Wehrmacht. He was in attack group South. Oh, he's like, well, I feel such guilt. Eh? I mean, the story told about uh, one of the guys in their outfit. He actually did. He raped a Ukrainian woman. Uh, you know, a Russian woman, Ukrainian woman. He raped a Ukrainian woman. Right. His his comrades, the guys in his unit were pretty horrified. I don't think he was a likable guy to begin with, but uh, the guy saw him do that, okay, in his unit, okay, motorized infantry, you know. Uh, they testified against him. They did. A, they gave him a trial, and they executed him, their own guy, right? Yeah. Uh, for many reasons, a very dishonorable thing to do, all right? I'm not saying this stuff wasn't done, but I'm just, I'm just giving you an example of a story told to me by somebody and then confirmed by other uh, accounts. They executed him, okay, for many reasons, okay? The, the immoral uh, thing of doing that to somebody, of course, is, is, is high. But also, you, you're going to have your soldiers raping people when, uh, and doing shenanigans when they should be watching out for partisans, right? And, and keeping, you know, everything maintained. Okay, yeah, that that's that's my that's one of my stories from my grandfather on the Eastern Front. So, oh, he's lying. Yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, just a little story. I just wanted to add to this one because this was actually cool. This story until you know the end part. Actually, at the end, you actually have what you had a lot. You had a lot of Red Army guys at the end, still getting defeated and being captured, literally like days before the final thing. Uh, and the, Ger the Germans at this point were like, I remember there was seen, they, they put their hands up when they get rescued. And the, the guy with the Sturmgewehr is like, you must be taking the piss, Ivan. And he just like shoots them all down, you know. Uh, 
that's another thing I could talk about. The, the idea of killing and mistreating prisoners, uh, which is, you know, only the sins of the Axis forces in that war. I don't know, man. You see normalized things of killing uh, prison German and Japanese prisoners all the time. You've seen them in movies for 60 fucking years or 80 years. Okay, as long as you've hide the comics, right? Always the war. I've made this way too long, <laughs> but I had to say a few things. But recommended book, right? And you know what? Uh, these guys agree with me, so I deem it a good book. Yeah.